What is up YouTube, I'm Galdite74 here, bringing you guys the quarterfinals for the PCP. This week we are taking on Dan, coach of the Dallas Stallers. We ended off the regular season with an 8-2 record, while my opponent ended off the regular season off with a 6-4 record. I have a lot to talk about before we get into the actual video, but to begin, this is our first ever playoff game of Generation 8. I'm very hyped to bring you guys this video, as playoffs are always exciting in Pokemon Draft, and this is no exception. I'm really forward, looking forward to showing you guys this today. There was no wildcard game, unfortunately. I am going to throw up a bracket on screen if I remember to, just to show you the breakdown of all the playoffs. I believe it's me versus Dan, Brett versus Nico, uh, Shea versus Sky, and Pat versus Marcus. I think that's what the, the brackets were, I believe. So that will be on screen. The only difference for us, really, is that we didn't get the extra week off like we initially were supposed to, which, albeit, does kind of suck a lot because, you know, college life is hard sometimes. But we are going to manage, and we still have a battle to give you guys. To recap uh, what happened against Dan last time, because we did face Dan in the regular season, we did beat him in our last battle. It was the, with the pre-home team, and it was probably our closest match with the pre-home team out of the five we had. It was definitely really close. That, I guess, like the one against Dial was pretty close too, but that was more of like an offensive one, while the one with Dan was a little more of a slugfest and hoping Mana Buzz could pull out in the end, and luckily it did. And that is a basic recap of our game versus Dan last time. Uh, the matchup is different. Our matchup last time was really bad, honestly. And our matchup this time is a little bit better. It's bad and good. It's bad as he has uh, offense that just completely destroys me. While it's good in the fact that knockoff kind of just runs over my opponent in this game. And hopefully I can try and take advantage of that. But with all that being said, we're going to break down the matchup for my quarterfinals game in the PCP. My opponent Dan has a team consisting of Mega Alakazam, Tapu Lele, Excadrill, Keldeo, Chansey, Alona Muck, Noivern, Pukumuku, Dusclops, Pyroar, and Ninjask. Now expect him to bring consists of Mega Alakazam, Tapu Lele, Chansey, Alona Muck, not Noivern or Dusclops. I almost pronounced the, my own mascot wrong for my uh, Northside Noiverns. But what I could see coming is probably the Excadrill. That's the only thing else I could see coming. Keldeo is really bad in this matchup. Pukumuku does basically nothing. Pyro is not a threat. And while Ninjask, like Speed Boost, Baton Vest could be annoying. That's It's a Ninjask, let's be real. But those six mods plus the Excadrill are the only real viable options I see in my eyes. Uh, problems on his team, Psychic Spam. He has a Tapu Lele and a Mega Alakazam. I am well aware that the Psychic Terrain didn't get nerfed this gen, but it's still really strong regardless, and Mega Alakazam is a really good Mega Pokemon, it's very good, and I have a really hard time dealing with that thing offensively. Psychic Spam just overall beats my kill leaders, As if you guys know, Conk and Slazzle did leave, lead my team in kills, and those two mods just do not like Mega Alakazam or Lele whatsoever. So again, offensively is going to be really hard to deal with. Uh, luckily my defense can sort of deal with it quite easily for the most part. If it is Calm Mind Alakazam, however, which is another point I wanted to make, it basically does claim a kill because I have only so many ways to break through an Alakazam with Calm Mind. Even Lele with Calm Mind is scary, it's just Alakazam is a little bit more scarier because of the speed stat of Alakazam. And another point I wanted to make, one more threat, is Curse Alone and Muck. If that, th if that thing starts boosting up, it's very hard to keep track with. There are a few things I have to deal with it effectively, but if it does get too boosted up, then I sort of just lose the game on the spot. I don't think he's going to have the opportunity to get too many curses up, but if he does, again, very scary for my team. Luckily, his offense does sort of just end there. It's good, but that's kind of it. And the rest of his team is pretty defensive. And it, I do pretty well against my opponent's defense as knockoff is just super spamble, as I mentioned earlier. Dusclops and Chansey don't want to lose their Evi Ole. Muck doesn't want to lose his berry. Uh, Pukimuku doesn't want to lose its leftovers. So knockoff is just good overall. It even is really good against his offense, too. Another mon that's actually surprisingly good in this matchup is Conkelder. Conkelder just runs through Chansey, uh, Pukumuku, and just all of his defense for the most part. And it's Conk's just so bulky. It takes hits from almost everything. It takes hits from the Pyro. It's going to take a hit from Keldeo, even Drill. Conk is just so bulky. And Drain Punch, it does 55 to Mega Alakazam, and it does like 40 to an offensive Noivern. And that's not switching in my eyes. So I see Conk doing a lot of work in this game. And that is basically a wrap-up of my opponent's team for this game. What I am bringing for my first playoffs game of the uh, generation is going to be Slowking, Zeraora, Ferrothorn, Donphan, Conkelder, and Mandibuzz. Now we are moving on to the portion where I break down my team. This might be a little bit longer than usual just because I have a lot to say for this battle. 
First up is Slow King. A Slow King is Max Bedev, a Calm Nature with an Assault Vest, moves being Scald, a Psy Shock, a Shadow Ball, and Icy Wind. You're probably wondering why I went so overkill with this Bedev this week, because there's a lot of it on this build. This is because Slow King is my switch into Mega Alakazam, Tapu Lele, Keldeo, Noivern, and Pyroar. Now, I don't expect all of them to come, but if they do come, Slow King is my best way to deal with all five of them. And unless it is a Calm Mind, Mega Alakazam, or Lele, it is going to hardwall all five of them, or maybe Specs Noivern too. That could also break through me as well. But outside of those things, Slow King is a really good way to deal with these mons, and it's really important because these mons sort of destroy my offense, particularly the Psychic Core that I mentioned earlier. And that's why I need Slow King to be healthy in this battle. I do have regen so I can switch out and come back in a lot, which is very helpful. And I have Icy Wind over Ice Beam because if he is a Calm Mind Alakazam, I could at least Icy Wind and Shadow Ball the Zam down. And if I do end up sacking my Slow King, I can bring in Zara Aura and uh, basically claim a kill, or at least hit the Mega Alakazam hard because I lowered its speed. And it does a lot to Noivern anyway, and it's lowering its speed as well. Speed control would be nice in this battle. And that is Slow King's job, is very important this week. Second up is going to be Zara Aura. Zara Aura is max attack adamant, enough speed to outspeed Noivern, Zap Plate with the moves, Volt Switch, Plasma Fist, Close Combat, and Knock Off, our first Knock Off user on the team this week. Electric Spam is super nice because his only ground type is Excadrill. And if Excadrill comes, it's already 7th mod on the team. I have Close Combat. If he's not Scarf, Chopper, or, or Sash, or any of that, then Close Combat just kills the Excadrill straight up. So I didn't really see it being too big of a threat. I did want Expert Belt on this set, but I felt like Zap Plate for the extra damage on like Noivern or Mega Zam would be really nice overall. Because I think it does knock out the Zam. I do have to be careful because Trace into Volt Absorb, then it's immune to it, but like before Mega Evolves. I don't really have to worry about that too much. It was just really nice for my opponent overall. He does not like knockoff. I, however, do not like Dusclops because even though knockoff, it, it, it does a solid chunk to it and it knocks off its Eviolate, I can't afford to get burned with this thing. So I do have to be careful with the Dusclops at least. But again, just spammable overall and Zeraor is really good in this matchup. Third up is Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn is holding the leftovers. It's a pretty standard Ferrothorn in regards to the EVs. The moves are a Stealth Rock, Leech Sheet, Gyro Ball, and a Body Press. Rocks are pretty good. His def he basically loses. Well, his Exadrill loses to Ferrothorn this week because I do have the Body Press on me. Last time I had Ferrothorn and he had Excadrill, I did not have Body Press just due to the matchup and the four move slot syndrome I had. And this time I do, so I can beat it if he wants to spin. And if he does bring Defog on Noivern, he is going to lose some crucial uh, coverage move on that thing. But Ferrothorn is really good to deal with the Chansey from a defensive standpoint. If it goes down, it's a little bit harder to deal with, but I still have the Conkeller on the team too. Ferrothorn is also another way to deal with his Psychic Core. The only reason it's a little bit more scarier, unlike the Slow King, is that because the Psychic Core is most likely going to have HP Fire on them. So I do definitely have to watch out for that lingering around, and just I can't just recklessly switch into Ferrothorn on those, because Ferrothorn is still pretty important in this matchup in dealing with his defensive mons overall. That's why I feel like Ferrothorn was a good fit on this build. Fourth up is Donphan. I think this is only the second time Donphan is coming, and Donphan is holding the Assault Vest. We got double AV on this team, a lot of HP, and a decent amount of attack. Who's being Earthquake, Knockoff, Rapid Spin, and Ice Shard? Another Knockoff user this week. Uh, Earthquake was super spammable against my opponent. He does sort of lack a good physical wall that isn't complete stall, like the Pukamuku and the Dusclops. So that's basically kind of it. I felt like Earthquake was really nice overall. Uh, Ice Shard does like 70% to Noivern, and it always hits the Noivern because Noivern cannot protect itself with the Psychic Surge, so I thought that was really valuable. And Rapid Spin just to get rid of any rocks if Drill or Chansey want to bring rocks on them this week. I just It's nice to get it off the team. But Earthquake was really spammable. It's a good way to offensively deal with the Mega Alakazam because I can come in after it kills something perhaps and then just Earthquake it because I can live any one hit because of my AV. So Assault Vest was just really good overall on this thing this week. Fifth up is the Conkeldur. I'm still bringing this thing. This thing is Flame Orb Guts with the moves of Bulk Up, Drain Punch, Knock Off, and Facade. Uh, his Facade switch in is zero. There's nothing. Dusclops, I guess. But I actually beat the Dusclops 1v1. Dusclops can sacrifice itself to get a lot of damage on my Conk, but I should win that battle 1v1 in the end. And that's really important because Dusclops is his best wall against me in my opinion. So I feel like that is something there. This can bulk up alongside a Cursing Alola Muck, and I will always win that fight, unless he crits me, of course. Uh, again, and Drain Punch, he just really doesn't have a switch in except for Lele. Uh, the Calcs, I believe, to all offensive mons were like Lele, it did 25%-ish. Alakazam was 55 min, 
and then the dust clops it did, it did like 50 40 to 50 uh, with knockoff i believe i think that's what the roll was and then 40 min to noivern as well i mentioned this earlier but i'm re-mentioning it again just because it's relevant here uh, really good way to deal with chancy it's so bulky it takes hits from keldeo and drill as i mentioned it just conk was just really good overall and i decided to throw it on the team and then finally we have mana buzz this is max defensive with uh boots as always foul play u-turn taunt and roost taunt to stop the alone muck from setting up too much u-turn for some pivoting momentum foul play to deal with exit drill and his psychic core a little bit and just mana buzz is really good because it's just so fat here I do have to be careful of Toxic on stuff like the Pukamuku or Dusclops if they want to carry that move, and even the Yolanda Muck. But outside of that, Mana Buzz basically walls a lot of these mons. And that is the team I am rocking out with for this playoff game. I'm pretty excited for it. We're only 10 minutes and like 50 seconds in. That's actually not that bad. So I hope you guys are excited for this game as much as I am. We're going to head over to Pokemon Showdown, and we're going to watch this battle. We have arrived at Pokemon Showdown, and looking at my opponent's team, I did get it mostly right. He did not bring the Dusclops, but did bring the Excadrill, which I could have saw coming, to be honest. In regards to lead, I am going to lead off with Ferrothorn, because unless he leads off with the Noivern, I either get my rocks up, or I can Gyro Ball something. As he leads off with the Tapu Lele, so I'm like, okay, that's fine. And I debated for going uh, either for rocks or ball for a while here, I decided to go for Gyro Ball, just in case he stayed in an HP fire, as he did here. So I click Gyro Ball and turn one, Tapu Lele is gone. That is humongous. That is like the biggest threat to my team is basically gone, except for maybe Zam. I say this because Conk basically can run wild now uh, against this team. Uh, Psychic Surge, he only has it for the next four turns, which Mega Alakazam comes out now to try and take advantage of. And that was just an excellent first turn. If I clicked Rocks, it would have been nice, but then I would have to switch out and then Tapu Lele could have been a problem. That was Scarf damage, by the way, so like, that could have been a Scarf Lele, which was a thing I could definitely saw, like, see coming. Uh, this AM's in now against my Slow King. My Slow King does about what I expected to do. I do get a Spit Death Drop, which is nice. This means I can probably click Scald on this turn, which I am going to click Scald instead, expecting him to switch. Uh, he has Energy Ball and HP Fire, so that's telling me this thing's probably not called mine. So already five turns in this battle, everything's looking pretty good. Uh, Muck goes for knockoff, he does get the poison touch on me, which is unfortunate, and he knocks off the boots, so it's a little bit annoying, but it's not the end of the world here, as I'm going to just click taunt. That skull damage sort of told me it was more of an AV Muck than anything, but I didn't really see that in my calc at the time, I was still thinking it could be a curse set, so I didn't want him setting up a curse. He goes on the drill, he goes for Iron Head, he's trying to flinch me here, as I do click the Roost just to stay healthy. Mandibuzz is really only here just for this drill at this point. I guess Chansey too, but I already have Ferrothorn for that. As this time I'm going to U-turn. I see this as a good opportunity to get my Conk in and its Flame Orb activated. And once its Flame Orb is activated, then Drain Punch or Facade just does a lot. This is another turn I thought about for a while, rather if I, which move I should click. I decided Drain Punch in the end as he does stay in and he gives me this drill, which is great. Uh, I do this because, again, as I mentioned, it's just going to still do so much to Noivern and Zam. And if they have either Roost or Recover, they're going to have to show it. As now Noivern comes out, I'm going to go out into the Slow King here as a pretty good switch into Noivern. He does drop a Draco, and unfortunately for him, he does miss. This would be big if he was Specs, but you're going to see here he's not Specs as he changes moves. So I'm not sure how big of a deal it made. It, it, it is a little bit of a problem for him that he didn't get that little bit of chip off. It's not like the biggest thing. I'm going to go out into Ferrothorn because it's my best way to deal with the Chansey here. As my opponent does make a double into the Noivern. I know this thing gets Flamethrower, so I'm going to go back out into the Slow King, expecting him to bust out the Flamethrower. If he goes for U-Turn, that would be a good play on my opponent's part. But he does go for the Flamethrower, so he does reveal it right there. And at this point, seeing that he's got Draco, U-Turn, and Flamethrower, I do not think this thing has Defog. So in my mind, I'm thinking Ferrothorn's going to come in and try and get rocks up at some point. And once it does that, its job is done. That's how I see it in my eyes. So I'm going to try and get, do the same play over and over again. Eventually, he's going to try and change it up. As this turn, he changes it up. He goes for Toxic. That's good, because now I can get up my rocks against him. And again, I don't really think his Noivern has Defog at this point, as he just throws up a Wish. And now I'm thinking for a while if I should go for Leech or Gyro. He might want to try and Wish this back into Zam. But as he goes on to the Noivern here, I almost got Gyro there, but I decided to click Leech Seed just in case he wanted to bring the Muck in. Gyro Ball was doing basically nothing, and it would have been a wasted turn. This time I at least get Leechy Recovery and some chip on this Noivern. Uh, this time I stay in, predicting him to go for a U-turn, as he does, and I'm just like, wow, that's wild. Uh, that was partially just also because of the uh, 
I didn't really need Ferrothorn as much as I clicked Gyro Ball, and unfortunately for my opponent, he forgot that he was switching in on U-turn just because of how the chat was. As Sam's going down here, and at this point, Conk just wins. Uh, I know Conk can't stay in on Noivern, assuming its last move is Hurricane, but it just rocks with rocks like uh, standing up against the Noivern. Conk basically wins this game. Uh, I do not switch out here just in case I go. I didn't want to like go into Slow King and he U turns in the muck and that become a problem, so I decided just to let him s just sack off the Ferrothorn. As I can bring in Zero Aura for free and just claim my kill with Plasma Fist, and at this point, Conk definitely wins now. Uh, I, I could have just Volt Switch out into it, but I'm just going to Plasma Fist and do a lot of damage here. I just miss out on the kill on Muck as he's going to go for a Poison Jab and does a pretty respectable amount of damage. He does get the Poison here, which is kind of whatever. As you're going to see here, my opponent does have the Shadow Sneak, so he is going to save himself a differential point by uh, claiming its kill against me with the Sneak plus the Poison. So this is going to be a double down here. At this point, the game has been over because Conk just cleans up at the end. As all my opponent has now, Dan has is a Chansey, as I have Conkelder in. And Conkelder is going to do the thing it does best and punch things, as he's going to punch this fat-ass egg into another dimension. And your Northside Noiverns are going to win this game for nothing in a pretty dominant fashion for our first playoff game in Gen 8. I really thought I was about to just completely throw everything away. But GG to my opponent, Dan. Deciding to click Gyro Ball over Stealth Rocks turn 1 was personally, I think, the biggest play of the entire game. Just because it prevented Tapu Lele from being a factor in this entire game. And Tapu Lele is a pretty threatening Pokemon, especially because it, it was probably Scarfed to outspeed Zara Aura, and that could have been a little bit annoying. But overall, I feel like that was pretty nice. And then my mindset and slash prediction game, if you want to call it that, was just insanely off the charts. I, I don't know what happened in that game. I couldn't really explain it, to be honest. It was just really good. But one more time, GG, Dan, thank you for the game so much. Uh, we are going to move on to the semifinals now, which is pretty nice. Uh, next week, I'm going to throw up a bracket uh, with the updated stuff, but I will tell you who we are facing. We are facing Brett. It was Brett versus Nico, as I said, and Brett did beat Nico. And in this case, unfortunately, because I did want my rematch against Nico and where he actually built the team. But alas, that's not going to happen. Brett finished off the season 8-2 and two as well. However, we did beat him, so we were one of his two losses. Uh, this was a post-home battle, so we have the basically the same teams. I did leave some stuff on the bench, some sets, some Pokemon, and it's most likely going to come, so I'm pretty excited. I have some stuff ready for him next week, and I'm very hyped for it. I hope you guys are as well. That's going to be next week's video. Thank you guys for watching so much. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. If you like Pokemon Draft League content, consider subscribing to the channel. I'm going to head out of here. Have a fantastic day, YouTube.